Welcome to the Fantasy Champions Fantasy Football Podcast. Here's your host, Morgan Colby and Rick Lemon. What's going on, Fantasy Champs? What's going on? My name is Morgan Colby. I got Rick Lemon with me as always. What's up? What's up? I uh, this is a this is going to be an interesting show um, because uh, ADP, you know, uh, is is interesting, and uh, and ADP in May is really interesting, and it's you know I I would say it's very early, um, but you know talking about it is is what we do in May when there's nothing yep. to talk about. So I'm trying to, as we speak, trying to find an article where I can, when I, where I can see uh, ADP happening, but it's just the, uh, uh, the first look. Well, if you can't find one, I have one for underdog, which is a different, it's best ball format. So it's not redraft. Okay. But. I got, I got one too. I got one on four for four. Yeah. That's the um, one. Okay. We're both looking at the same sheet then. I don't need to send it. It's underdog though, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But probably. Uh, but anyway, so we're going to break down some ADP. Some of the ADP is going to be a little bit different um, based on formats and different stuff like that. We're going to assume it's PPR. If underdog is there, some things will be slightly different in redraft, but underdog is pretty close to what the reality is. Yeah, there's um, a couple players that will be totally different, yeah. but there's a lot of players that will be similar. Okay. So, um, and this is just an average of several different, um, ADPs, the one I have for four for four. So, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see what the situation, I'm going to send this to you because it doesn't even say it has underdog. On okay. Right? Yeah. I yeah. see it. Multi- the multi-site one. Yeah. I'm on that one too as well. Uh, okay. All right. We're good. Um, so yeah, but, uh, breaking down ADP, I, I think it's important we we do this uh, again, closer to redraft season, um, in August and September, because, um, at that time, you're going to get a more uh, clear depiction of what situations are and where you should be drafting guys and where the value is and where the value isn't. And when we're this far out, you're just kind of projecting what players might do because um, the ADP is going to change significantly based on what happens. Guys can get hurt. Um, guys can overperform in camp. Um, and there's reasons why you know, a, a, a player in fantasy football is similar to a stock and can go up and down like crazy. So, um you know, obviously ADP is something that uh, is important for you to look at. So today we're going to break down ADP for fantasy football um, early, very early into this. It'll be interesting to see where guys are. Um, hopefully, you know, Rick, we're going to look at the same sheet um, and ignore all underdog. Okay. Yeah, we are. We are looking at the same sheet. So, um, so anyway, um, before we do that, check out our website, fantasygems.com, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok. If you're listening on a podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, any other podcasting platforms, please leave a review, share this podcast with your friends. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe, click the bell for notifications, like, and comment down below. So basically how this is going to work, um, is we're just going to go round by round and talk about some people, uh, that are surprising some people that, um, obviously we, we don't, we're not going to go pick by pick and talk about how, uh, you know, the 101 is the 101, and the 102 is the 102, and the 103 is the 103, and why is the 103 not the 101? We're just going to talk about rounds as holes, guys that surprise us, guys that don't surprise us, stuff like that. So um, we'll start with round one, assuming it's 12-team. Uh, um, first round right now looks like uh, Jefferson McCaffrey Chase, Eckler, Kelsey Cup. Hill, Robinson, Taylor, Barkley, Diggs, and then Adams. Um, Kelsey, 105. He gets worse every year. He gets older every year, too. I know. I was going to say it gets worse, but, I mean, he's been he was worth it last year. But So, basically, um, with that, right, you see Travis Kelsey at the 105. Uh, we'll talk about that first, I guess. Um, last year, was he the wide receiver three? I think he was the wide receiver three or four. Okay. If he's producing like that, then it's it's not a bad selection. Yep. Because you might be sacrificing the wide receiver, but you're getting a player who's going to produce at the same level. Yep. Now, my issue is, is that last year was a ridiculous year for him, 
And if if I I'd have to go look at the numbers of what he had. Is he ever gonna top that as a 34 year old tight end? Definitely not. But I'm gonna pull up the numbers right now because I do want to confirm. You know the definition of insanity is. So he had a, 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 doing the same thing <laughs> over and over and over again. Correct, and I'm insane because I'm out on Travis Kelsey again. Uh, so Kelsey had 316 total fantasy points in PPR last year. Um, Jefferson had 368. Tyreek Hill had 341. Devontae Adams had 335. Stephen Diggs had oh, 321. So he, fell off a bit. so he was a top five selection. Uh, he was wide receiver five essentially. Um, so to me, when I look at that, I'm drafting six, seven wide receivers over Travis Kelsey. Um, especially, get, well, I guess, yeah, six. So, but like, I'm just, I'm looking at the situation. I'm like, the, the, I don't think having a really good tight end gives you that great of a positional advantage over other people because there's nine other people in your league that has to deal with not having a tight end. And if you draft a tight end as high as you would draft Travis Kelsey, that means you're sacrificing other positions like wide receiver and running back that are far more important and harder to get later in the round in later rounds when you could get, you know, um, a much better or an equivalent, not an equivalent tight end, but somebody that might be slightly worse than Travis Kelsey in the middle rounds um, or even in the fourth or fifth round. So uh, that's just a strategy thing for me. But if you won championships last year, drafting Travis Kelsey, congratulations. Yeah, I, I do think he was worth it last year, even being the wide receiver five, because he was a late first round last year. Mm-hmm. But being at the one of five, I'm so, I know I say it every year, and I feel like I'm to the point where I pretty much have been wrong every year. Mm-hmm. He's one guy that I've been really wrong about. But the dude's going to be 34 this year, and you're going to take him at the 105 at the tight end position? Mm-hmm. Like, That's, really? Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I I'm – not taking Kelsey again could come back to bite me, but it, he's he's going to hit a cliff, and it's coming sooner rather than later. I, I it's again, I hate to be like that guy because like Max Kellerman said, Brady's going to fall off a cliff, mm-hmm. and then it took him like seven years before he actually did fall off yeah, the cliff. The beating that Kelsey takes and the amount of targets he gets, like right, it's not even close to the same thing as Brady. So it's definitely coming. Yeah, it's but who knows? Maybe he has one more great year, and we're all wrong, and he's the top three wide receiver again. again but he would have to finish he would have to be the wide receiver three to be worth that pick mm-hmm. at the 105 we're here to um, give you fantasy advice and our advice to you would be to not draft travis kelsey that high if he's in the second round late maybe but like right here this isn't it's like top five is not the i would say the only play. format again it's different but best ball um i would could i i still, still wouldn't take him there but i i would consider taking kelsey just because it's best ball and it's totally yeah. you can't just like sub in a different tight end like you're just stuck with what you have mm-hmm. so you at least know kelsey's gonna be productive there yep. but that's it and redraft no thank you but we are talking about the adp so we should probably mention some other guys yeah uh justin jefferson as the 101 um we talked about this coming out of the uh the regular season um last year and when we were recapping the season a little bit after uh the fantasy football season ended um, the, there being a shift a little bit to the wide receiver position and how, especially in PPR leagues, how heavy, um, the wide receiver position is in, and how effective it can be. If you have a, a guy like Justin Jefferson or Jamar chase on your, on your team. Um, so it does not surprise me that he is one Oh one, but are you still sticking with the RB strat? If you have the one Oh one, are you going with Justin Jefferson? I think as of right now, if I had the one Oh one, I'd probably still take McCaffrey. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> McCaffrey, you, 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 and that boy. Yeah, I, you know it. I, <laughs> it's never gonna change, man. Never. Um, Bihan, eighth overall. How does it make you feel? He's dropping at least. Um, he was good six. News. Yeah, I don't know. At eight, you know, I, I, I don't think it's egregious at eight. I, I still wouldn't take him there. I think he should be a little lower. Okay. But I'm just looking at like the other running backs. To me, like if you're in a PPR league, Eckler, yeah. McCaffrey, yeah. Jonathan Taylor, probably, yeah. But he kind of scares me. The Colts offense this year, at least, is probably going to be really bad again. So, like, mm-hmm. he scares me. Saquon, I think I would take over Behan, but the injury history. And then you get to guys like Derrick Henry, Jacobs, Chubb. So, I, I don't actually hate that. I think he should be lower. I think he should be in like that 10 
mm-hmm. pick 10 to um, like 10 to 15 range, I think would be better for him. But I don't hate it. Yeah. I mean, you know, just looking at PPR and how that landscape goes, you see, you know, in the top 12 here, six wide receivers go off the board and Bihan yeah. would be the third running back off the board. Right. So like, are you getting that RB three production out of him? Like, yeah, it's the, not. It's That's why I said pick, like, but I, I would put Barkley ahead of him. Yeah. Right. And then you probably have to put JT ahead of him too. Right. Jonathan Taylor. Yeah. I don't know. Isn't he? See, off that's his, what I'm saying. Like, isn't it's he coming like, off injury? No, but he's he wasn't he he was like RB twenty last year. Or yeah, something. The like offensive that. line was and freaking the, straight. But it was. But Anthony, you got you got a rookie quarterback. Like, how good are the Colts? Is that Colts offense going to be this year? You know, mm-hmm. I, I think at the end of the day, you probably still would want to take Taylor over Robinson, but it's debatable, right? Yeah. So I pick at RB like I would take Barkley. I think Barkley over both those guys. But then I think you can make the real argument with Bihan as the RB4. Okay. Um, all right, let's do some like rapid fire on round one. Rapid fire. Okay. Uh, for you, who's the who's the biggest steal? In um, based on ADP? Oh, the biggest steal round one. Because I got my eyes on a dude. Uh, I'd probably say Barkley. I like Barkley there at the one ten. I, again, I'm high on Barkley. I think last year, uh, he was what the RB three, mm-hmm. wasn't he? RB four, something like that. And I think he could have been better. I think the Giants, um, they are limited because of Danny Dimes, but I think Darren Waller helps because it takes away the focus a little bit for mm-hmm. defenses on Barkley. Yep. I think he's a guy that has that RB one potential still. And as the fifth running back off the board, I, I'd be good with Barkley there. Um, and then I also like Diggs too because yeah, I'm a I was, Diggs guy. I was just about to say that Diggs is my guy. Yeah, at, at the 111, um, he kind of tailed off at the end of last year, but yeah. for half the season he was like the was wide receiver one yeah. or two. And I think too, like uh, he did not have the best season in the second mm-hmm. half, um, which which brought down his fantasy totals. But if he has a full season where he's really really good, um, mm-hmm. like he was in the first half, he can be a wide receiver one. So like. You know, I think all the guys here, Jefferson, Chase, uh, Tyreek Hill, Cooper Cup, uh, and Stefan Diggs, like I think those five guys have a wide receiver one potential. Um, after that, I think it kind of falls off slightly. Um, but Diggs is definitely one of those guys, like when he's playing well and he's on, he's up there with Chase and Jefferson. So yeah, uh, to get him as the fifth guy is, you know. Yeah, that would I be agree. Great. I think the best case scenario looking at this is probably you get like the 11th or 12th pick. And hopefully you can turn it into Diggs and Barkley. And that, oh, yeah. that could be your, yeah, at the turn. your start. Give me ideas because I'm going to get the 10th pick here. Um, <laughs> all right, biggest bust. Uh, in the first round? Yep. I mean, it's Kelsey. Yeah, it's, I, Kelsey. I, it's Kelsey for sure. I, I think that, that's the obvious one. Okay. Uh, moving to the second round here, uh, we have CeeDee Lamb, uh, Brown, Henry, Patrick Mahomes, uh, Amon Ross, St. Brown, and then we have uh, Josh Jacobs, Nick Chubb, Jalen Waddle, Allen Wilson, Hertz, and Tony Pollard. Um, Pollard. So that is, yeah, that's the first 24 picks here. Um, love Lamb at wide receiver seven. Um, Patrick Mahomes at QB1, 16th pick off the board, 204. Seems a little high for me. Um, yeah. I and that's just my quarterback thing. I, I'm not. I I don't shun taking quarterbacks high anymore. Um, but second round still feels a little. The last time Patrick Mahomes finished as the QB one, which I don't even know that he did this year. He did. He um, was the QB one this year. Uh, he subsequently preceded that with three straight years of not being the QB one and being like QB three or four. So, um, <laughs> drafting him. Yeah, I wouldn't take enough. Mahomes. I wouldn't take Mahomes in that spot. Um, if, I think if you're gonna take a QB one, it would be Hurts or Allen. I think um, let me. I'm trying to, yeah. Allen at 209 is much better, but I still don't like a second round pick. I still don't like that either. Jalen Hurts is also in the second round, so it's like you got three quarterbacks going here. Uh, But you also see this. You know, the first round you had six, seven receivers taken. This round it kind of levels off a little bit uh, because the wide receiver 11 is taken and Garrett Wilson at pick 22. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the wide receiver 12 isn't taken until pick 27, uh, following that, which we'll get to. Um, but you have your RB 
nine getting taken here. So a lot more running backs in this round um, evens out, but love Garrett Wilson at pick 22. Yeah, the second round, I feel like, I mean, it's still the second round, but has a lot of good players, mm -hmm. guys who could still be a catalyst for your team, uh, which is why those first couple of rounds are so imp important. But I, like CD Lamb, I think is a solid value there. He could be a first round pick easily. AJ Brown, same thing. Um, I, I think I'd really like a Monra too in PPR leagues. Oh, yeah. uh, Jacobs and Chubb, I think, are nine? RB1s. Yeah, exactly. Waddle to me, I like. Garrett Wilson, I love, obviously. And even Pollard, if Dallas doesn't do anything, is a good value at that spot. So a lot of good picks here. I definitely would not take a quarterback. I think the bust here is probably, I don't want to say it's Mahomes because he's still going to be really good and you're not going to be like, ah, I shouldn't have taken Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. But uh, to me, he's the QB. He's probably going to be my QB three this year. Mm -hmm. Um, so to take him at like pick 16 to me is just a little high. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to have to agree with that. Um, I am enamored when we initially talked about potential ADP for the season, when we drafted the first two rounds together, um, mm -hmm. in like, was it February? Uh, yeah. I initially thought Josh Jacobs was going to be much higher. Yeah. We had him RB7. as a first round pick. We had him as a first round pick. He goes 18 here. Chubb. No more Kareem Hunt. Doesn't sound right. like he's coming back. They didn't add any running backs through the draft, which was expected. So, you know, if Hunt, if if Chubb stays healthy, this could be the unleashing pass catching and running of Nicholas Chubb um, at RB7. I love that. That's like, if I can yeah. draft him in the second round, I'm going to be, I'm going to be on the ground. Um, and then you have Tony Pollard, as RB nine pick 24, that is great value for a guy yeah. that's going to be the starting running back for Dallas. Yep. Um, so I'm, that's a lot of great picks. Pick. A lot of good running backs. I think I'm putting together the strategy in my skull. See, I like the, I, I mean, I, I like the running back too, but I think the wide receivers in this round are really good as well. Oh yeah. They're fantastic. See, this is the problem though. I'm going to end up, I'm going to end up in the second round and be staring at AJ Brown and CD lamb right next. Right. To you have no idea what to do. And I'm going to be like conflicted internally. And then, and then you gonna, take Derek. I'm going to panic pick Debo again. <laughs> right. So, um, all right. Uh, you already gave your biggest bust. I, I would say my biggest buzz, probably Derek Henry. Um, they were already talking about getting rid of him. Clearly, I think Tennessee knows something. I still think he's a great running back, and he'll probably be really good for fantasy this year, but there's always that off chance that um, he's too old. Uh, yeah, Julian, I, he's very interesting because... Julian like, Edelman yelled at Tom Brady, you're too old, and that's what I'm saying right. to Derrick Henry right now. And he's like a guy who, I mean, he finished in points per game-wise as the RB4 last year, and yeah. he's still like... like I know people that will still take him... I'm surprised he's not a first round pick. I pick 15. Like, I feel like that's a lower than what I expected, but at the same time, he's the what 30 year old running back on a team. That's going to be, I think really bad this year in Tennessee. Yeah. So like I wouldn't take Derrick Henry either, but he is kind of interesting, mm -hmm. but I would agree. He's probably the, I, to me, he's him and Mahomes. I, I just don't love those two spots there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the guy that could potentially um, have a lot of upside is being undervalued. I think that would be Tony Pollard for me in this round. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, man, I don't know. I, got, I mean, I think I, – I don't know if he necessarily is being undervalued, but I really like Garrett Wilson there at the end of the second round oh, yeah. as the wide receiver 11, as someone who could just have a monster breakout year. Yeah, fair enough. Um, third round, we have uh, Travis Etienne, Mark Andrews, uh, T. Higgins, Ramondre Stevenson, Devonta Smith, Najee Harris, uh, Joe Burrow, Brees Hall, Kenneth Walker, DK Metcalf, TJ Hawkinson, Chris Olave. First thing that stood out to me, Ramondre, uh, he's going off the board as the RB11, which does not surprise me. Um, we did have him as a top 12 selection for running back, but we also drafted him top 12. Um, in our initial projection, right? Well, here, they really had like two receivers. He's three Oh four. Um, Patriots didn't add anything. They let Harris walk. Um, James as, Robinson, baby. As time goes, that's true. They had James Robinson. As time goes along, I'm less excited about Ramondre Stevenson. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why, because I know that the it's Patriots, the, the Pats, the Patriots always end up, they draft yep. their draft running backs. They red shirt them. They have two guys, Kevin Harris, Pierre strong, 
it's not gonna be a workhorse like people think yeah and i like Ramondre, but yeah i like and i'm just trying to remember back to bill o'brien's days like he had sony michelle right that was that pre i think that was pre bill o'brien o'brien was i can't remember like that was 2014 i can't remember who they who they had it right shane vereen days and James White still. Uh, maybe early James White, yeah. So, I mean, we'll see what happens. Um, they're going to utilize Ramondre a lot because he's the best player they got. But, um, And I, I think 304 is really good. Like, if he's a third-round yeah. running back, that's that's really good for me. Um, Najee falls into this round. He sucked last year. Um, they added some, some offensive line help, so maybe that bends in the right direction. But, um, yeah. Who was the second tight end? Mark Andrews at 302. I was like, it said TJ Hawkinson at t- at tight end three. And I'm like, where'd the second one go? Yeah. Yep. Mark this Andrews. is the sadness that I endure. I will not be drafting TJ Hawkinson this year. Yeah. But so that has a lot of questions years. to me um, as of now. I don't love Mark Andrews this year because, for one, he's still getting drafted pretty high. And two, they added so many weapons that I feel like they're going to spread the ball out more. Either that or it'll open up the field for Mark Andrews to catch more. I mean, that's true. That is true. Um, I'm hoping that's not happening because I just traded him away in a dynasty league. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Mark Andrews, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I don't love their... I mean, we talked about Brees Hall and Kenneth Walker on the last show. Of, like, who would we take? 13 they're literally back-to-back right now. Yeah. So both those guys have question marks. Um, a lot of question marks here. I don't, I, I like Ramon, even though I'm with you, I'm a little lower on Ramondre than I was. I still like him at that spot. Mm-hmm. I like T Higgins there. Um, I'm not crazy about Devonte, but that's not a bad spot. Uh, my favorite player, I think in this round and this spot is Chris Olave at wide receiver 15 at the end of the, th- the last pick of the third round, kind of a early fourth round. Um, he could still be a low end wide receiver. Yeah, one. we talked about him a couple. I think it was last week. Yeah, and I was the one that was kind of bullish on him. But at that spot, like I don't mind because I would take him over Metcalf for me, um, and I think he's in that same tier. I think I would take Higgins over him, but I think he's in the same tier as Higgins. So and Devontae as well. So I think at that spot, that's a pretty good spot for him. Bust for the round. Ah. Uh, I don't know. This is tough. I I think it might be. Mm, I don't know, man. It's because there's a lot of guys that I have question marks on, but I don't think any of them to me look like a true bust. Maybe, mm. um, man, I I could get some flack on this, but maybe Etn at that just just at that spot. Um, okay. RB ten. Yeah, and he's one of those guys that I I don't know because he could. I've drafted him in in best ball, and like I do like the player, um, but he has again question marks. He was kind of he, he's not going to be a workhorse, right? So, and they drafted Tank Bigsby in like the third round, so they drafted a running back with some capital, and we all we talk we're talking about Kenneth Walker and his situation, but we're not really talking as much with Etn, and I just feel like. And I, this isn't saying I wouldn't draft him because to me the third round is pretty good. I, I like the third round yeah. almost more than the second round in terms of busts. Like I don't think there's a lot of busts here, mm-hmm. um, but he's someone who I'm a little nervous about at that spot at least. So for us, I think we uh, both like Chris Olave here in this spot. Um, yeah. But I guess I would say my my bust would probably be Mondre. Oh, okay. I don't think he's going to be a bust, but I think he's not going to perform at that RB11 position. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel about ETN. Yeah. So when we say bust, we're not talking about guys that are just going to completely crap themselves like normal people would say, but just a guy that underperforms the ADP. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to lie to it. I think you'd probably disagree with this one, but I'm not crazy about Devontae either. Yeah, but I think he'll be fine. Just because I, I think what he was last year with Jalen Hurts to yeah. me is his ceiling. Now... I'm I'm just not like like I love Joe Burrow. I love Burrow here. I love, yeah, I was, yeah, I was just gonna, gonna say, say I, that. I, yeah. I I absolutely love Joe Burrow, and I think he's amazing. But in order for him to have a really good fantasy football season, he needs to throw thirty-five to forty touchdowns, which he's been doing, <laughs> which which he has been doing. But that doesn't even get him in the top five most times. He was QB four last year. Was he really? Yeah, but that's a third right. round selection. Like I'm not, I'm not about right. that. And Fields Lamar was hurt, and Fields I, to yeah. me, like Fields and Lamar, I would take higher them both over him. 
Yeah. Yeah. So um, let's jump to the fourth round. Where we're going to talk about some of those guys. Uh, Gibbs, Lamar Jackson, Debo Samuel, Dalvin Cook, Aaron Jones, um, Justin Fields, George Kittle, Keenan Allen, Joe Mixon, Amari Cooper, DeAndre Hopkins, and Justin Herbert come into this slot. Justin Herbert, uh, Lamar Jackson, and um, Justin Fields all stand out to me. I don't like how high they're getting taken. I would like them better in the fifth round, but I think all three of those guys are better values than the three guys that um yeah or the four guys that are mentioned in the first four, you know first three rounds so i would take any one of those guys over here uh debo, I agree. debo is a steal at wide receiver 16 yes yep dalvin, he's the guy i immediately looked at dalvin cook is a steal as the running back 16 if so, he starts <sighs> if he starts for minnesota or he, he goes to kansas city those two options he's fine well, that's true but um Running back 60. If he goes to Kansas City, I think his ADP is going to jump. If he stays in Minnesota and this is where he holds, like that's fine. I don't know about Aaron Jones with Green Bay. Um, we'll find out there. But You should I do mean, some underdog drafts because Dalvin Cook is a seventh-round pick in underdog, 67. Whiz. Joe Mixon, sounds like he's staying in Cincinnati. He's RB18. So Might get suspended, though. Oh, for what? Uh, he He did something. I don't remember, but. It wouldn't be as bad as Kamara. That's why he's not as low. Yeah. Um, but he might be facing like a small suspension. So um, I'm looking at this round though, and I'm like, normally I take a running back, and and the guy that I would take here, and he's so high, would probably be Gibbs, if I was taking yep, a running back. I would at, take. I, at, yep. at wide receiver, it's Debo, but after Debo, I'm kind of scared. Like yeah. Amari Cooper, DeAndre Hopkins, <laughs> I'm not really in on. Like, and, yeah. and Hopkins might be fine, but. You know, I mean, because it's wide receiver 19 and it's a fourth round pick. So, and it's a late fourth, basically a fifth. So, like, what are you really risking? But I would take, you know, Calvin Ridley over him, DJ Moore maybe over him. So, um, maybe not DJ Moore because I'm kind of out on him too. But, you know, I just don't know. Like, I'm thinking, like, do I go quarterback this round? Mm. Because I like all three of them. Do I take yeah. that risk? I don't know. That's tough. Um, yeah. It, it, this is another, you know, solid round. Uh, I don't know if there's a lot of guys. Again, there's a I, bunch of guys I, I don't like after yeah. um, after George Kittle. <laughs> some of these two are like, I want to see my projections with some of these guys. I agree with you, though. The, the first guy that stood out to me was Debo. That's great value. Dalvin, to me, is interesting because if he stays in Minnesota, which he – well, I think Schefter reported that they're yeah. done with him. So he's not staying. They're either going to cut him, they're going to trade him. Mm-hmm. He's not staying in Minnesota. I don't know why. I don't know what happened. But he's gone. So that's going to be kind of a tricky one. Where that could end up being kind of a bad value there, or it could be a great value. So we'll have to see with his landing spot and what's going on. I don't know if, like, the Chiefs would be amazing. Mm-hmm. So it totally would depend. Um, I don't mind Gibbs there. Um, the quarterbacks as well, I agree 100%. I would, this is where I would probably target for quarterback if you're going for one early, um, mm-hmm. especially Fields there. Yeah. Uh, the guys I don't like, I don't know if I can pick one, but you're right. After Kittle, to me, Keenan Allen, Nixon, Cooper, Hopkins, I'd probably am staying away from that grouping. Um, and believe it or not, if I had to pick one, I think my bust here is Hopkins. And it's not necessarily on him, mm-hmm. but if Kyler Murray's going to miss half the season or more, yeah. and he stays with the uh, Arizona Cardinals, like I don't see a path there where he has a great season. And again, bust is loose because he's Hopkins, so he's still going to get a lot of catches. Probably will get a lot of yards, yeah. and will be like a you know you just decent think he'll fantasy receiver. His ADP. But what is it? I said you just think he'll underperform his ADP. I think he'll underperform. Yeah, I don't think he'll yeah. be a great option. And I don't think he's I don't know if I necessarily agree with that, but I don't want to draft him in the fourth round. So there's that. Yeah. I mean, if so, if Kyler Murray's out for like the year or close to the year, are you, would that change? Oh, your yeah. Opinion? That changes everything. Yeah. Cause I, right I, now I, there's talks that he's out first 10 weeks of the year. Oh, jeez. Never so mind. this is like towards ACL at the end of the season. Like last so. year when you, yeah, I think hop actually might fall down. I don't think he's going to be that high when the season starts. Um, it's, it's all going to depend with Kyler. All right, fifth round. Uh, you have Ridley, Goddard, Darren Waller, Kyle Pitts, Damian Pierce, um, DJ Moore, 
Trevor Lawrence, um, mm-hmm. Terry McLaurin, DeAndre Swift, Miles Sanders, J.K. Dobbins, uh, Jerry Judy, and Chris Godwin. Um, actually, Chris Godwin's a sixth round pick. Uh, but anyway, um, I love Miles Sanders and DeAndre Swift in this range. I don't mind J.K. Dobbins in this range. Uh, they're wide receiver 20, 21, and 22. So it could be some value there in the fifth. Um, not a lot of receivers we're looking at. Uh, my favorite would probably be Calvin Ridley. Um, obviously hasn't played for a year. So a lot of people don't know what their expectations are of him. Um, and Kyle Pitts still too friggin' high. You people are dumb. I mean, as the tight I, to me, I actually like Kyle Pitts this year. I in think the fifth it, round, I've been, I've been telling you that for a while. I don't mind no, Kyle Pitts. I don't mind, but last not. year he stabbed people in the chest and like as a fifth round selection, I'm done. Like I, I'm not drafting Kyle Pitts that high. I'm not. Doing I, that. I get it. I, I would take Kyle Pitts, but the fifth round, yeah, you're probably right. That's a little. I think I, it as like a sixth, seventh round pick, I, I'm drafting, because I, I, I think, as a rookie tight end, I know he underperformed because people he was like a tight end. Wasn't he like the tight end three? His yeah, rookie year like getting that. drafted. Yeah. He still finished as the tight end six as a rookie. Like, you know how crazy that is? For no, a he's a great tonight? player. Just last year, he was very underwhelming. Uh, right. And he, exactly. That's why I thought I'd be completely all in on him this year. Fifth round I pick, I thought I'd, he'd be like a seventh or eighth round. People are getting the, the same idea round. you are. If he falls to the sixth, seventh, or if he falls to the seventh, eighth, or ninth round, similar I would to even I take him in the last sixth. year, I'll take him. I would take him in the sixth. The where fifth. I, where did I take Hawk last year? I don't, I don't even remember. He, was, he fell for you in like the seventh. I think you, you took him in the seventh. <sighs> that was a, that was. That was glorious. But he was supposed to be like a fifth round. I didn't pick. want to take a tight end at all. I think Kyle Pitts could be that. I, I so, but yeah, fifth round is probably too high. Um, uh, my favorite player here. It cuts off at what pick 60, 61, uh, 60. Pick pick sixty. So my favorite player is Judy. Yeah, you know, I agree. You, know you, you might be like, you you guys drove this bus last year, and he uh, we drove it right into the ravine. Wasn't great, but we were kind of right about Judy future last New year. England Patriot. Oh, well, I hope so. I don't. I don't think so, though. But I hope so. Um, but Judy here to me, um, like we drove the bus last year, and we were mostly right because he was still, I think, a top twenty receiver, and he missed time. Mm-hmm. Um, there were games too where he got hurt in the first quarter. Like if he just played a healthy season last year, he was going to be like a top fifteen guy. Yeah, and he was in an offense that was really bad. You bring Sean Payton in, and yeah, I mean, if Russ is cooked, then it's not going to really matter that much. But even worst case scenario, you get what you got last year, which at this spot is still good. Yeah, <laughs> and I agree. best case scenario, you get Sean Payton in there, and Russ gets revived. If Russell Wilson is back to Seahawks, Russell Wilson or close mm-hmm. to it with Sean Payton, Jerry Judy's going to be a stud, and this is going to be the steal of the draft. So I love Jerry Judy here. Um, and then I'm not crazy about the tight ends here. And I'd probably say yeah. Waller no, would be my bust. I'm noticing as I um, as I scroll down, there's a trend here. Like Evan Ingram is picked 6th, 11th. Um, yeah. That's... And he's a tight end 8. Tight end 9 is David Njoku at 7, 10. Tight end Ugh. 10 is Pat Fryermuth in the 7th round. Like, I'm okay with that. But, you know, it's just there's the, the tight ends. Does are it really make you really want to take a tight end early? Like a Kittle or a Hawk? Not really. I, I might just punt it and... <laughs> Not at my all. Fingers. Just take one. Yeah, not just take one. But anyway, um, yeah. So we'll stop with the f- we'll stop in the fifth round. But I just wanted to go through some other guys. Christian Watson, um, wide receiver twenty five. He's I like Godwin and better. Watson there. Uh, we were today. talking about Isaiah Pacheco on our previous show. Uh, right now he's running back twenty five, which is no. Get the frig out of here in the sixth round with Isaiah Pacheco. Um, yeah, I mean it starts. This is where it, like. Typically, the sixth round is where I start looking at tight end, um, sixth or seventh, because there's just no one available. Like, but, but I don't like the tight ends here. So I don't I like Ingram. I, like, I don't like Njoku I that like much. Like, at this spot, like Firemuth I Fryermuth is okay, dull. but they have. I don't know. It's always weird seeing guys like Alvin Kamara at pick seventy-seven. Yeah, he's probably gonna get suspended for like half a year or so. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of different guys um, as you jump into the later rounds. Um, and I think after round seven, I will say there's there's like, you know, it's really a pick your poison. Like, who are your favorite players? You know, because I typically start reaching for guys a little bit 
um, that I like to make sure I get them. So like Kadarius Tooney's pick 908. Um, you know, that's a guy I really like. So I might draft him in the eighth round. Um, if, if, you know, I want to invest in him, you know, other guys, <laughs> Juju Smith-Schuster, nine twelve. Wide receiver 45. That's not awful. He's getting taken two picks ahead of Jacoby Myers. I actually, Kadarius Tooney there is, could be a, yeah, no, that's a steal the draft. Steal. Absolute steal. Um, and they got Jordan Addison. I don't mind at 901. There you go. He's the first rookie, right? Mm -hmm. Off the board. Uh, I don't know. For receivers. No, I don't uh, think Jackson, where was Smith, Jackson Smith of Jacobo went 81. Oh, so sure. second round. Yeah, I like Addison there more than. So, but there is a lot of, you know, 10th round and on is, is even more, you know, flyers, but I always yeah. say the first, um, you know, the first five to seven rounds of your draft are the solidification of the core of your team. And then everything else, like you want to take shots. So like you might see some older guys here, like Alvin Kamara at pick 77 that you might be looking at. And it's like, if he doesn't get suspended, which he hasn't yet, um, you might look at him as an option in the later rounds to be like, oh, I'm going to get this guy, but he's also old. He's facing suspension. There's all this other he's, stuff. He might be him. in a running back committee as well. <laughs> I would rather go with a guy like Javante Williams at pick 29, you know, or um, I'm trying to find another running back like AJ Dillon. Um, he's mm. pick 90. Rashad White, who's uh, just ahead of him. Right. Rashad White, who's just ahead right. of him. So, like, yeah. I, you know, to me, I, I'm going to go with the younger, you know, uh, prospect that could hit. Javante does the older me, guy. Javante does. Yeah, he is kind of scary. But like you have, you have some of these guys, and it's like, you know, the older guys tend to fall back um, a little bit later in rounds and stuff like that. So, you know, you just want to keep like yeah. Michael Thomas is going to be a hot pick in the in the ninth round. Everyone's going to be like well, Michael Thomas, he's coming back. For a third straight year. I'd rather take Tony. You know, yes, I'd rather yeah, take I Jordan too. Addison. I'd rather take even Jahan Dotson. I don't even like him. Um, Gabe Davis, Cortland Sutton. Like, I'd rather have those guys than Michael Thomas. Yeah, maybe so, not Cortland Sutton, but I don't know. Anyway, that's just a strategy for me. Like, after I get the core right, 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 team right. done, I'm gonna no, take. Sense. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take good shots. Yeah, like, players who are the guy. Like, I like Traylon Burks as a as a flyer. You do. I do. Uh, I know that offense blows, but he's gonna be like the guy is this that our year. New Tyler Boyd. What is that? Is that our new Tyler Boyd? Three straight years. Uh, remember yeah, that, remember that train Tyler Boyd. Boyd for three, four straight seasons. We were like, you can get him in the seventh round. This goes a steal. Yeah, no, but you're right. Like the Kadarius Tonys. Um, I I don't mind. I like Dotson because I like the player more. But yeah. a little scared because if Sam Howell blows, they're screwed. Um, AJ Dillon is actually screwed. that's pretty good value at that mm -hmm. spot. Yeah. Um, if Alvin Kamara is suspended, Jamal Williams is going to be good value there. What do you think of Khalil Herbert? Quickly. Um, ask me in two months. Okay, because I'm not that him. high on him. But where is he going? I, he's tenth round, end of the tenth round. Yeah, no, I do that. I do that. Right. Um, I, I do the Bears don't well. have a running back, right? Exactly. Yeah, it's him and uh, they signed uh, the guy I hated that ended up being okay on the Panthers. Oh yeah, no, that's not even a competition. That's his competition. So. Yes, and they liked Khalil Herbert. That's why they right. let Monty go. Right. And so. they did draft somebody in the fourth round. Oh, Roshan Johnson. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. so there could be but some competition there. For there him. will be, but I think Herbert probably gets the first crack at it. So Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Um, you had Gibby there, 12th round pick. Antonio Gibson? Gibson? Yeah. Holy crap. Yes. I'll take a lot of him. You know, Alexander Madison in the 12th round is going to be – not a twelfth round pick. <laughs> he's oh, if, gonna if fly yeah, he's going to fly up boards, up that's going to be a massive change. But anyway, um, always fun analyzing the ADP. Uh -huh. There you go. This is all the information you need for the, at least the first six rounds. We are going to break down ADP as the season go off season goes along. We're going to hop into mock drafts, draft guys in certain areas. It's going to be a good time. Um, but take this information, soak it in, and hope it holds because this is the best time of the year. See you later, guys. Thank you for listening to the Fantasy Champions Podcast. Make sure you subscribe on iTunes and YouTube and follow us on Twitter at the FF Champs.